let's get to a Tuesday Big Take. The Big Take on Kale & Company. All right, this morning's Big Take, grooming victims through equity in education. You know, it's one of their three favorite words, equity. We hear it all the time from today's administration. We hear diversity. We hear equity. And, of course, we hear inclusion, buzzwords, catchphrases, and toxic vocabulary, all meant to elicit an emotional response from whom they hope will take the bait because that's what the left does. They sell fear and hope that you will buy it. And once you buy it, they continue to repackage it and rebrand it for generation after generation. And that is exactly what's going on in our schools. Educators across America, many of whom are progressive, are telling the youth of today that they are already behind in their development and their odds of succeeding in America based on their identity alone. Equity is defined as the quality of being fair and impartial. And I would say that today, America has never been better with fairness and impartiality. But don't tell that to the teachers union and left-wing educators, because they are telling children that they are already victims. They are telling kids that not everybody starts in the same place, but the goal is to end up in the same place. We love hearing that quote from the Veep Kamala Harris, except it's simply not true. Not everybody will end up being successful. Some people are born with more skills or smarts than others. It doesn't mean you can't get to where you want to be. You just might have to work harder than others, let your merit shine and break through, and cash in on what we like to call capitalism. Life isn't fair. Life isn't easy. But the left instills a victimhood culture of dependency merely on traits such as race, gender, and identity. Last week on Kale & Company, one of our callers, Tom from Cherry Hill, called into our show to tell us how in Collingswood, New Jersey, they have an entire school board dedicating meetings to equity. He said it was posted on YouTube, and we found it. Take a listen to this school administrator waxing on about equity. We had an equity committee back starting uh, in 2018. We had a district equity council in 2020. We also conducted an audit in partnership with Rowan University and their Center for Equity um, and Success. In addition to my independent transition and, and review of the district through this lens of equity. And so all of those are, are the foundation for the work that then led for the development of our strategic plan, which was a six month journey that started in 2021 and got us to June of 2022. And so when we think about our collective mission, our mission is by building on the strengths of our diverse community, we commit to providing an inclusive and supportive environment that inspires and empowers every student. So that's our mission. Conducting an audit on equity. You've got to be kidding me. Now, that was just under one minute of a mail-delivered Kamala Harris-esque word salad on equity. And it all sounds so witty and intelligent and next level, yet when you try to unpack it, you end up with nothing. It's a word salad without the dressing. The substance is the dressing, and there's no dressing. Nice work, though. Also slipped in the other two buzzwords at the end, Did you hear the diversity and inclusive buzzwords that go along with equity? And this guy is probably stealing a decent salary to put together slideshows packed with nothing and set to deliver them to parents and enrage people. I can see why Tom from Cherry Hill alerted us to this. That's your tax dollars hard at work. Forget about reading comprehension and mathematics and where our children are really behind when it comes to academic advancement since the pandemic but now let's focus on diversity equity and inclusion because you can really monetize that as you grow and enter the workforce as well as pronouns can't forget those because that all falls under the identity umbrella as far as i'm concerned all of this might be able to be taught in the private sector in private schools where parents maybe knowingly enter into an institution for their children with what they already understand to be an identity curriculum and what it entails. 
And that applies to colleges and universities as well, because we're not just talking about kids K through 12. Point in case, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis putting an end to this in Florida when it comes to post high school education. Take a listen to DeSantis. Our legislature is currently in session and they are going to be passing legislation, which I will sign to make Florida the first state in America to eliminate these DEI departments from our university system. They say it's about uh, they say it's about diversity, equity and inclusion. But in reality, it's using the university's administrative bureaucracy to impose an ideological agenda. It's not DEI stands for the way it's practiced, division, exclusion, and indoctrination. And that has no part in our public institutions. Entire departments dedicated to this absurdity around the country. And I like the rebranding there. DEI, division, exclusion, indoctrination. It's exactly what it is. It's not diversity, equity, and inclusion, which Collingswood and other schools in our listening area are implementing right now at this very moment in time. We also gave you the story last week on how Florida and DeSantis have implemented school vouchers statewide for parents and families, school choice for every family, even families making over $130,000 a year combined household income. It shouldn't matter your tax bracket. It's your children. It's their future. And I think all states should have this, but it's gaining momentum and it's picking up steam. Texas also jumping in on the school voucher program. Texas Governor Greg Abbott also signing legislation to give parents and families in the Lone Star State the choice to put their children in schools that focus on education and growth, social and communication development, not indoctrination and victimhood. Why are we telling our children at 6, 12, 15 years old that they are already victims? Look around society today. I would argue that 6, 10, 12, 15-year-old kids have it better than they've ever had it before. And I thought it was pretty great in the 90s. But it's funny how the red states seem to get things right when it comes to simple things like focusing on the basics in our education system. And it's sad how so many states allocate your money and their funds to departments that are dedicated to all of this Biden administration buzzword nonsense and cliches that sound so lovey-dovey and great on paper until you actually peel back the curtain and realize what it truly is. And that's The Big Take. The Big Take on Kale & Company. Start your day with Kale & Company. Weekday mornings 6 till 10 on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app.